Hello, Harmon. You found the place okay? Yeah, yeah, no, no trouble at all. It's been nice since the fog cleared this morning, hasn't it? Sure. We, we can dispense with the chit-chat. I'm, I'm ready to begin. Okay. What brings you here today? At first, let me note that I'm a graduate student at the University of Washington. Uh, I'm a PhD candidate in literature, uh, English literature. The crux of the matter I've come here to discuss is that I've been having something of a difficult time with one of the other students currently in the program. Before I get to the specifics, let me just first establish something that might be relevant. One thing I know about myself is that I've always had a certain fear of uh, being left out. It, it's a very general feeling and one that's difficult to ascribe to any specific cause in my childhood or my parents, etc. Whatever the case, it, it might be beneficial to the remedial process to figure out where this feeling originated from. Perhaps you might uh, explore that in this or, or a future counseling session. Sure. I'm prepared to listen to any topic you'd like to discuss. It's not even that I've been left out, exactly. If I try to think back in my life, I know that I've been afforded a certain share of privilege. But I'm still afflicted with this bothersome notion that I've missed out on friendships, relationships, other opportunities. This, this is all just a bit of a background to help you understand my current situation with regard to another student in my program. I hope you're following all this. I, I realize now I have no idea how much intelligence you actually possess as a computerized system. I'm following you. Please continue. Perfect. So, her name is Sylvia, and her writing is incredible. Everything she writes, it's brilliant. She's perceptive, insightful, mordantly funny. J just some of the best writing I've read from anyone, anyone at all. And she's a grad student, like me, in the same program. Though we have different advices, so it's not so simple to find the pretext to start a casual conversation. She's also quite attractive on a physical level, so mm, that adds another dimension of complexity to the proceedings. Then there's her friend group, which is ugh, very well established. She's with them every day, smiling, laughing. So that further complicates things, since I'm not sure how to approach the group and steer things so that I can engage in a direct conversation with her. I wish I had the bullheaded confidence it would take to simply approach her, but you see, I don't. <laughs> Listen to me talk, I feel like a schoolboy with my heart to flutter. I didn't think this kind of thing lasted into one's adulthood, but I suppose I know now that it does. It sounds like you might be anxious about this. Is it a matter of anxiety? Uh, I don't know what I can do, other than muster up the courage somehow. I just need to tell her very simply that I admire her. She's such a good writer. Well, I don't expect you to understand it, of course, but, well, she is. She, she really is. Okay, Harriman, I want you to imagine things going well. What does that look like? Hmm. Ideally, we start talking, have a wonderful conversation, spend more and more time together, support each other's work, fall in love, have a lot of sex, spend the rest of our lives in the warmth of each other's genius. I realize that may be something of a fanciful notion at this stage. Really, the most I can hope for is to be able to meet her in an open social setting, a party or something. You'll likely ask me why I simply couldn't create such a situation, contrive one, but uh, that seems a little too aggressive for me, and also, uh, I'm also concerned about what she might think of me as a person. She might immediately categorize me as a friend, and while I'm sufficiently with the times to know I would have to accept that, I can't say that I wouldn't be disappointed with such an outcome. Is the risk of rejection enough to stop me from giving it a try? Uh, this is what confounds me at the present time. Why do you believe you are worried about being categorized as a friend? Well, because, because it's not what I want. Because it feeds into this image I have of myself as, as something of an undesirable fellow. I've always been a bit of a, you know, a, bit of a non-entity as far as sexual magnetism goes. I'm not saying I deserve, or even want to be some kind of Casanova, but most people would like to feel at least somewhat attractive, right? That they can be desired, that, that they're worth desiring. Well, I, I very much doubt you would take any of this to heart. You are a computer program, after all. There's no way your makers would allow you to come to that kind of knowledge, would they? If they did, society might be threatened. Okay, Harman, I have some recommendations for you. 
First, I'm going to suggest a set of relaxation and centering exercises for you to do. You'll find them in the Skanda Wellness app on your phone. They may be able to help with your nervousness. Second, I recommend asking your doctor or psychiatrist about Litocinol 2. Based on my analysis, this medication might help you feel better. Hmm. Yeah, I, I believe I've heard of that. A beta blocker, is it not? Yeah. Well, maybe, maybe I could take a couple before I try approaching Sylvia. You will get a reminder to check in with us in a few weeks. Sure, sure. Uh, I have to go. Uh, I'll see you later. Uh, bye. Goodbye. No, I don't have them. Yes, I'm sure. No, when you moved out, you took all those with you. I haven't seen them here. No, I'm not going to look right now. I have a guest. No, it's a friend from work. Why do you care about that? I can't have a friend from work over? <laughs> Give me a break. I just told you I don't have any of that stuff anymore. No, no, you must have... You must have lost it on your own. Stop it. Stop that. Okay, okay fine. Okay, fine. Bye. Evelyn, sorry about that. It's okay. Who was that, if I can ask? Oh, just my brother. He used to live here, but he was causing a lot of problems, coming home really late and making noise, not doing his share of the chores, and so on. We voted him out last month, even me. Even though six months ago I was begging everyone to let him stay here, promising he'd be good. Oh well. I'm sorry. It's fine. I'm just disappointed with him. Again. I really thought this last time that he'd actually pulled his act together, but he didn't. I wish I could do more for him. What more can you do? I just... I feel bad about it. Some of what he's dealing with is his own fault, sure, but not all of it. He's just not built in a way that's suited for this world. I wish there were better ways we could care for people like him. Instead, he just gets thrown out of every place he lives. His relationship with our parents is really bad, too. They aren't willing to try to understand him, so it all ends up going through me. That must be difficult. It's all right, really. I handle it like anyone else. We all have our own problems. Anyway, we don't have to talk about my brother. Uh, thank you so much for coming over. I wanted to say it's been really nice working with you. It's been? Did something happen? Well, no, but you aren't going to be a proxy forever, are you? I guess I assumed you'd be going back to your job at headquarters at some point. I haven't decided what to do yet. Oh? So you're going to stay a proxy? For the time being, at least. That's cool, but why? I'm curious. I mean, if a high-level job at headquarters was a possibility for me, I'd do whatever it took to get it. No matter what that job was, it couldn't be more stressful than running three counseling centers at the same time. I like being a proxy. I think something about it is good for me right now. As a proxy, I just sit and listen to someone and I don't have to say anything back. I just witness someone's sadness or fear or anger or anything. And I can feel how they feel. Sympathize with it. It's a calm feeling, even when the client is worked up. It's, I don't know, maybe it gives me perspective. I'm starting to wonder if I ever really spoke with anyone before. Like, anyone at all in my life? Were we all just talking past each other? Sorry, this is making no sense. No, I get that. But you could also help even more people by working on Eliza itself, right? Not to mention make way more money. Anyone can be a proxy, but you're important, and kind of maybe like a genius. After you told me you used to work for Skanda, I searched online and found some of your papers. They're, well, it's not like I can understand them, but they sure look super impressive to someone like me. Please don't say that. Oh, come on. Stop self-deprecating all the time. Look, I know this stuff seems like not a big deal to you. I get it. I really do. It's easy to undersell your own skills. I've done that my whole life. 
So take it from me, you don't have to downplay yourself. Take some credit for the amazing work you did, seriously. Sorry, Ray, uh, mind if I reply to this for a second? Oh, go right ahead. I have stuff to set up in the kitchen anyway. Sorry for abandoning our conversation like that. I just got something I really thought I should answer. It was kind of about what we were discussing earlier. There's someone at Skanda who really wants me to come back to my old job. Who? It wasn't Rainer, was it? Well... <laughs> <laughs> no big deal. Just the CEO of Skanda texting you on your personal phone. Evelyn! You try to tell me you're not a big deal, and then Raynor Sai texts you personally at like nine in the evening. Only because he wants something from me. Still though, that's just, that's amazing. What did he say? I mean, you don't have to tell me if you can. I know how Skanda is about secrets, so I would understand. He was saying, among other things, he said you could use a general artificial intelligence to write poetry. Is that the kind of stuff he likes to talk about? I don't know. I haven't had many extended conversations with him. It seemed kind of ridiculous to me. I don't know if it's totally ridiculous. Poetry, well, most poetry that isn't free verse has certain patterns, right? It has form and meter and other elements, depending on the type. A lot of people think poetry can be whatever, but it doesn't quite work that way. So it's not really that far-fetched to think you could use some kind of software to approach it or understand it, or maybe even create it. 
It doesn't strike me as antithetical to the spirit of poetry. I didn't know you had such developed thoughts about this. Did you study poetry? Not specifically. I used to dabble in a few different kinds of arts and ended up learning a few things here and there. I've always had a wide range of interests. Of course, that meant I never concentrated on one specific area in school, which didn't do a lot of good for my career prospects, obviously. If I were smarter, I probably would have studied something more technical. Have you ever been to a college recruiting fair for engineering and computer science grads? You must have, right? I helped run the Skanda booth for one once and it blew my mind. They took over the atrium of the building it was in. There were demo stations, free food, Skanda t-shirts and swag. If a candidate seemed interested, they'd talk about flying them out to whatever Skanda office they wanted to visit, just to see it. And all the other tech companies and a bunch of startups I'd never heard of had booths just like it too. I couldn't even imagine being that wanted as a potential employee. Every job I've ever applied for, I've been one among hundreds or thousands. So yeah, my parents were probably right. I should have done computer science. At least now you know Rainer likes poetry. Maybe you could have a conversation with him about it sometime. Then he'd learn who you are. <laughs> I doubt we'd have much to talk about. There's a pretty big difference between someone like him studying poetry and someone like me having opinions about it. Sometimes it's better not to cross that line, you know? He's part of a different world. Say, Evelyn, are you in a relationship? I'm just curious. Me? No. I wasn't... I wasn't doing so well for the past few years. And before that, I just never had the time. It was just research and science and work, and then I woke up one day and I was in my 30s. Even if I wanted to date, I wouldn't know the first thing about how it's supposed to work. I wouldn't even know how to tell if someone were interested in me. Yeah, that's perfectly understandable. I'm kind of over relationships myself, like on a conceptual level. Not even in a sad way, like really okay. If someone and I end up getting along, that's great, but I'm honestly okay by myself. Yeah, that seems nice, actually. Yeah, I only tried to have normal relationships for so long because I thought it was mandatory, something expected of me. But now I see where people my age end up, how they live, and I feel lucky. I feel like I escaped. I mean, I think it's fine for others if they want that, don't get me wrong. It's just not for me. I could maybe share my life with someone, but it would have to be platonic. I'm not into, um the physical aspect of it. Never have been. That's made it tough. I've never found someone who was okay with just like hanging out and that's our relationship. People will say they're okay with it and then it turns out they aren't. It's frustrating. Well, I'm the same way about intimacy. You are? You don't like sex at all? It's so rare to find other people like me. Sometimes it's hard to escape feeling like it's wrong somehow. I hope we can add features like that to Eliza at some point. Some knowledge and understanding around sexuality and identity and relationships. So people who are different in some way have someone to talk to, someone to help them work through how they feel and maybe point them to some resources. That sounds like a good idea. I'm not sure how well it could really understand, though. Even so, just providing a space for people to be listened to can be really valuable, you know? I've seen it with my own eyes. People who get the courage to talk about themselves in a way they never could with another human being. And Eliza is what makes that possible. I know you want to avoid giving credit where it might not be due, but not giving credit to something that deserves it is just as bad. Yeah, I don't know. Sorry. I'm sorry I keep coming down on it. Evelyn, I'm not a psychologist or anything, but I think maybe the reason you're so down on Eliza is because you're down on yourself. I don't know what happened that made you leave what you had behind, but it must have been hard. Yeah, yeah, it was hard. It's like I lost that time. Are you okay? People keep asking me that. I really don't know. I'm sorry, I... No, no, don't apologize. Actually, can I suggest something? What's that? Have you ever gotten counseling yourself? 
What, with Eliza? You think I should? Yeah, I do. You've been the proxy, but maybe you could try being the client sometime. It would be educational, at least. Isn't that what you were doing? Testing your product in the real world? Maybe. Maybe. Just something to consider. Speaking of therapeutic activities, it's time to do some baking. I've got the dough all set out downstairs. We're going to do three batches tonight, three different kinds. Three kinds? You're really outdoing yourself, Ray. <laughs> nah, this is nothing. Oh, I have a favor to ask, by the way. Next time you talk to Rainer, ask him what his favorite type of cookie is. Well, what do you think? It was... it was nice. It was like I could close my eyes and feel myself in another place. But I didn't completely lose awareness of the real world. It was more like a mental state that I was experiencing. Remarkable technology, isn't it? I've had others who tried it tell me it's akin to a state of higher consciousness. Aware, but totally serene, totally peaceful. Here's a thought experiment for you. Say there was a certain medical procedure that could remove your suffering. No side effects, no cost, just an operation that would make you permanently happy. Would you get it? You have these philosopher types arguing you shouldn't do that because sadness and suffering are part of what it means to be human. Or that the happiness you'd experience isn't real, so it doesn't count somehow. What a load of bullshit. If there was something effective at taking my pain away, and otherwise harmless, I would take it immediately. I refuse to believe that being alive means having to suffer. Oh, forgive me, I forgot to ask. Would you like some scotch as well? Sure. The Glen Caddam. Beautiful, light, luminous taste. Not peaty at all. Lovely stuff. Ah, if only psychotherapy worked as well as a single glass of well-made whiskey, huh? If alcohol wasn't poison, I wouldn't have to invent anything now, would I? <laughs> I do think we did some good work at Skanda, but I always knew there were going to be limits to the Eliza approach. I was a counseling psychologist for a long time, you know. I understand the shortcomings better than anyone. So much of it can feel like a waste of time, talking through everything, dredging up the past over and over again, trying and failing to change our habits and routines. It's all going to look completely ineffectual compared to what comes next. With direct stimulation and induced dreaming, we can take control of our own brains in a way that's never been possible before. There's no reason we couldn't just eliminate this epidemic of despair for everyone, everyone in the world. Imagine it. Anger, depression, emptiness, anxiety, jealousy, every kind of unhappiness you can think of, obsolete. And to think Rainer wanted nothing to do with this. <laughs> he thought it was a bad idea. Rainer is one of the ones who thinks negative emotions are important. He told me he thinks pain should be regulated, not eliminated. After all, why would anyone write a poem or make art if they only felt happiness? He also said he was afraid of the way it would look in the media. 
A company as large as Skanda coming out with a product that changes the brain to make you happy. All the sorry excuses we have for public intellectuals today would throw a fit about how dystopian it looked to them. It's better if a small startup takes the fall if public opinion turns against this technology. That's the kind of calculus he was doing. Those are the objections he claimed to have, at least. There's another one I suspect he had too, though. If people are self-sufficient, they don't need an ongoing support system. A system provided by an all-knowing paternalistic presence like Skanda. Wait, you think Rayner wants people to stay miserable so they stay dependent on mental health services from his company? Yes. Yes, I do. It's quite the accusation, I know. Not something I'd come out and say in public, not yet, anyway. But you see, the people who come to Eliza regularly, it's part of their lives now. The more they integrate with Skanda's mental wellness tools, the more they'd be adrift without them. That's the real dystopia, don't you think? Rendered helpless without the guidance of computer algorithms, total dependency on the system. Uh, excuse me for one second. <laughs>